Welcome from the Integrate project. The Belmont Forum and JPI Climate brought together three groups, tree ring specialists from the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Langzhou, climate scientists from the Justus Liebig University in Germany, and expertise in climate modelling and data analysis at the Climatic Research Unit at UEA. What makes Integrate distinct? Well, we focus on South and East Asian climate, but we also look at influences from outside the tropics, including the Arctic and Atlantic. We consider variability on all timescales, including multi-decadal and longer, so we have to bring in evidence from climate proxies, especially from tree rings. We integrate this with instrumental observations and the insights provided by climate models. So what have we achieved? We integrated scientists from six countries, all the way from Uruguay to China, including those at all career stages from master's students upwards. We published 36 papers and we supported our researchers' development through conferences and presentations. And here you can hear from a few of our scientists and their findings. Hello, I'm Zhao Ning Wang from the Chinese Academy of Sciences. As we know, the Atlantic multi-decadal variability, referred to as AFV, has significant influences on decadal climate change, but its drivers remain unclear. In this work, we reconstructed AFV over the past 1,200 years. We found that the external forces only contribute one third of AFV change as the internal variability contributes more. Our results also suggest a connection between the North Atlantic SST at the North Hemisphere temperature during the past 12 centuries. The results have, have imp important implications for decade climate predictions. In this study, we examine the relationships between the multidecadal variability of surface temperature in East Asia and two extratropical modes of variability called the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation and the Pacific decadal oscillation. For this, we have compared global climate model simulations and reconstructions in the last millennium period to assess the influences of external forcing and unforced variability. The results from the study indicates that the Atlantic variability and East Asian temperature relationship is partly driven by external forcing such as volcanic forcing, whereas the Pacific variability and East Asian temperature relationship is largely from the internal variability within the climate system. Hello, I'm Dr. Stephanie Talento, and this work is entitled Response of the Asian Summer Monsoons to a High Latitude Thermal Forcing, Mechanisms and Nonlinearities. What did we do? We run a set of numerical experiments in which we apply a high latitude forcing. The forcing consists of warming in the northern hemisphere and cooling in the southern hemisphere. What did we find? We found that the forcing indeed affects the Asian summer monsoons and that their response is characterized by a precipitation dipole with wet conditions over eastern Tibetan Plateau and its southern margin, and dry conditions over Bay of Bengal and Southeast Asia. Regarding mechanisms, we learned that the transmission of information from high northern latitudes is done mainly through the water vapor feedback. We also learned that this is a non-linear response. Which are the implications? In particular, for in the context of the current climate change, our results indicate a possible increase in monsoonal precipitation over the eastern Tibetan Plateau and its southern margin. Please, if you want to learn more, visit the corresponding publication. Where and when will climate change make the climate more arid? We use the ratio of precipitation to potential evaporation as a measure of aridity. The arid regions in our current climate are shown on this map. We bias corrected 27 CMIP5 climate models and then diagnosed where their climate change simulations indicated it would become more arid than currently. 
we define the emergence of an aridity change as when the change exceeds a measure of the natural climate variability in each location. These models predict that significant aridification would emerge over about 30% of the land surface by the time global warming reaches 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial, the red and blue regions here, which include parts of southern China. However, aridification could be avoided in about two-thirds of those regions, the one shaded blue, if global warming is limited to only 1.5 degrees, the more stringent aim of the Paris Agreement.